the rebel he come in Gozbeda. In this time, just uh, in, uh, the rebel in Gozbeda. The rebels are in Gozbeda yeah, yeah. at this time. They've taken the city um, of Gozbeda, and they say that there are government forces just outside of of the city of Gozbeda who are prepared to relaunch an attack since the rebels, rebels are now holding the city. So we are in a, a betche still um, until we know further. It's been, what, four or five days that we've been kind of stuck and not able to do what we want to do and not able to accomplish anything that we had planned on accomplishing. Um, but then for most of the people that we're going to go talk to or that we want to go talk to, it's been four or five years. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, to just put this in perspective is really important. Um, we're going a bit stir-crazy here, um, but we can still move around a little bit and everything. And then, you know, being stuck in a refugee camp for four or five years is um, hard to imagine. The refugees are sort of, they're helpless right now in this entire, you know, I don't want to speak for the exact politics of the rebel movement, but what's happening in Chad is similar to what drove the genocide in Darfur. It's a certain percentage, a certain very low percentage of power-driven individuals. Uh, and so, you know, individuals that want to get themselves into power and don't really care about, you know, the, the hundreds of thousands of millions, uh, the rest of the population, they, they just want to live in peace. Um, so it's frustrating to us because these, you know, these are events that we have absolutely no control over. Um, but for refugees as well, I mean, the fighting in Gozbeda is a uh, continent I've never been, but it's within you know, 10 or 15 minutes of the Jabal refugee camp. These refugees have done nothing. Um, they're, they fled violence to come over to Chad, and now they're seeing even more violence in Chad. Uh, we have our families back home. Uh, we have our homes. Actually, we have homes to go back to, and the refugees don't have anything. So that's another thing. For, for you, KDJ, that know people in Gosbeda, that know uh, the refugees that are they're pretty much live in, in Gosbeda, it's just really a little hub to, to the camp. Uh, um, what are your feelings about what they must feel when they're hearing, again, shots and they're he he hearing the shelling? A lot of them must be thinking to themselves that, that when they originally fled and, you know, up to about six months ago, it was a, it was a sure bet, a much better and a much safer journey. Uh, the journey itself was difficult, but once you crossed into Chad, you were, you were, you were safer than you were if you were to stay in an IDP camp in Darfur because many of the refugees have been attacked over and over again. Once they fled the village, they've ended up in an IDP camp and then eventually make it across the border. Um, for the women that, that I've met, like Amhush and Khadija and Ashta, I can't imagine what it would be like to have the children with you that are left. So having lost already some um, to situations that start out with boom, 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 and having the bombs fall and then the John Jaweed ride in after and hearing the gun shell and hearing all of that again. And if I was them, I would be thinking they're coming coming for us again um, and trying to figure out what you do. What do you, are you fleeing again? Are you fleeing? Are you leaving the refugee camp? Um, are you still safe? Are you going to lose another child? I've been thinking a lot about my mom, my dad, my sister, and um, you know, I told them that last time you guys were here there was a coup and that don't worry, that that'll, you know, there's no chance that's going to happen again. And look, there's another coup. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tough um, to be here and know that they'll be worrying so much about me. Like you were saying earlier, you know, I'm always going to have that home to return to, and that even though my family sort of split up because I'm over here, you know, eventually we'll come back together, and um, you know, and that'll all be sorted out, you know, whether it's you know days, weeks, whatever. Um, but for refugees, it's, you know, that's not the reality at all. Your family gets split up, you don't know whether you'll see them again. The Darfur conflict is really becoming one that encompasses the entire region. Um, it's not just Sudan now, it's, it's Chad. We've heard a lot about refugees in southern Chad coming over from the Central African Republic. That's something that I think we've ignored and need to look at as well. And so, you know, if anything, um, I think there's been a lot of activism in the States, but just from being here, we realize that there needs to be a lot more because if not, it's not just going to be the refugees now, but there's going to be hundreds of thousands more. There's going to be other countries that are absolved in this conflict. He wants uh, help for his family and, and peace uh, in his life. Donc, I like uh, peace. Anangis, that's it.
I like peace in chat. Peace in peace is good. No like robbers, no like uh, government, uh, army, pim 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 is no good in, in the chat. I like peace in chat.